I'm George Pearson and these are just a few examples from some of the training videos I have here on YouTube. Now when you're working with the training, following along the training, if you want to get the materials I used in the training, just go to the description down below and click on the link that's at the top of the description and this will take you to a page where you can download the materials. Please subscribe, click the like button, and of course always share on Facebook, Twitter, or wherever. I really appreciate that. Okay, let's go ahead and get started with the video. In this Photoshop Elements video, we'll be using the frequency separation technique to do some retouching on this girl's portrait. If I zoom in here a little bit, you'll see it's a very attractive girl, but of course, because she's in her teens, there are some problems in here with the complexion. There has been some retouching, also very nicely done makeup, but we can make this look a lot better with frequency separation. Now if you're not familiar with this technique, I recommend watching my previous video which explains the technique in a lot more detail. Go ahead and click on that link on the screen that takes you back to the last video. I also put the link in the description and I'll bring the link up again at the end of this video so it's easy to get back to that video if you need more information about the frequency separation. Okay, here's how it's done very quickly. Take the background layer, drag it up here to the new layer button right there. Let's rename this color. Take the color layer and drag it to the new layer button and then rename this layer texture. There we go. Take the texture layer and drag it to the new layer button. It should say texture copy. Okay, three layers plus the background. On the first layer down here, we're going to blur this layer out and that's going to get rid of the texture. It's going to hide the texture because we're blurring it out. This will be our color layer, just shows the color. Now this is done with the Gaussian blur filter and keep the settings relatively low. I tend to use mine at about four. So that's filter, blur, Gaussian blur right there. And there's my setting of four. And you can see in here, it's very soft. I do the preview right there. You get to work for us. Now this is good enough right there. You can see it, there it is. So by using this blur we keep the color but we lose all the textures. We've hidden the texture by doing that blur. Do the exact same blur up here on the top layer it says texture copy. This is easy. You just go up to filter and click on the top link. This is the last filter that you used in which case this is the Gaussian blur at 4. I'll click on that and that blurs that out. Now again notice how we've lost most of that texture but we've kept all the color. Okay. Now, on this layer, what we want to do is we're going to be combining this layer with this layer. This layer still has the full texture on it. And I want to use this layer to get rid of the color in this layer, but we're going to keep the texture. We'll see how that's done. First, we're going to be inverting this layer. And that's Filter, Adjustments, Invert. Gives you a color negative of this. Now, set the opacity to 50%. And there we go. This makes this a grayscale when you combine the two. And the grayscale gets rid of the color, but where's they, where there's a big shift, and the big shift is happening because this has texture and this doesn't. This is sharp and this is blurry. The big shift happens where the textures are. So this allows us to retain those textures. We now need to merge these two layers. Hold the Control key down, click on the second layer, right click, Merge Layers, and then we can get rid of where it says Copy. There we go. Come down to color. Now, as soon as you do that, the icon, the thumbnail here, changes to just that gray, which is the representation over here. So now I have a texture layer, which is this, and a color layer, which is the blur layer. I now want to put these two together, and we'll do that by blurring or doing a blending mode on the texture layer. So come down here to linear light right there. You put those together, and you have a nice full image again. Now that we have this, I can use the texture layer to edit out texture and then the color layer to adjust color. The approach on this is you first do your texture pass and then go back and do your color pass as you need to. Most of the adjustments will be on the texture layer. Grab the clone stamp tool right there. I have mine set at about 30 for this particular picture. See there's the size of the tool on the texture. And what you want to do is you want to take an area that has clean texture next to what you want to adjust, like right there. So I'll hold the Alt key down, click right there, move up to here and click, 
and it cleans that out. Let's get this little bit on the nose there. Come just off here, Alt and click, and then on top, click, and that goes away. Let's get this little spot right here, just up here, Alt, click, and then click on that spot, and the spot goes away. It's that easy to do. So it's a matter then of just going through and doing these little steps in here to clean up as much as you can using the texture. Now sometimes things won't go away just by using the texture. There'll be a little color shift as well and that's where you want to go in and use the color layer. So far everything looks like we're doing pretty well here on just the texture alone. Now, that's usually the case. Let's scroll up here and get the forehead areas. And get that spot. Get a little bit of color right there. See a little, little off on the color. We'll get that in just a second. Now this is a very fine detail technique. We're not doing big adjustments with this technique. It's all small stuff. If you need to do big adjustments on your photograph, get those done first before you come in here and do this. This is your kind of your final cleanup pass on your image. Let's get that little darkness right there. I'll go to the color layer. I'm going to take some color from here and put it right down to there. So again, alt click and then come down there and touch. And there we go. That's all nicely cleaned up. Scroll down a little bit. Looking pretty good. Maybe a little touch up right here. I'll take a little bit of this and put it right there. Cleans that out nicely. A little bit of that right there. That's a bit too much. Let's try a different color. There we go. So that's nicely cleaned up. Let's come down. Let's get the chin area now back to the texture. Again, always do the textures first. You'll find that most of the adjustment is going to be done with your texture layer. Right there, notice that we adjusted the texture, but there's still kind of a dark spot. Back to our color. And let's grab a close area of color and toss it in. And there we go. So you can use the color for those little bits that need a bit of a color touch up. There's a little bit of redness in here, so I'm going to come in and just do a little bit right there with the color to clean that out. Okay, back to our texture, and let's continue. And just a matter of working through. Whenever you see this little kind of cross here, that means I'm on the Alt key, and I'm grabbing a spot to clone from. When you see the circle with that gray dot in the middle, that's the clone that I'm doing. And just going through and matching up texture. We'll get that in just a second. Okay, we're looking pretty good here. Now a little tricky right here next to the edge. You don't want to get too close. We'd have to mask that out. Okay, I think that's looking pretty nice. Don't take it too far. Don't clean up every little last thing. It begins to look fake if you do that. Okay, let's take care of this. That needs a color shift. So back to our color layer. And I'll grab from just next to it and come right on top. And there we go. That fixes that one. Okay, back to our texture. Let's scroll down a little bit and check the neck area. Little spot right there. Let me just hit that one. That's good. Little spot right there. That's easy. Little spot here, there's some hair in here also. The hair is going to be showing up as a texture. So in this case, you want to pull that hair down as well. So I'll go above the hair, pull it down a little bit right there, kind of keep that hair texture in there. And I think we're just about there. That's looking pretty good. A little bit of cleanup in there. Let's see, a oh, little spot right there. That's gone. Okay, I think we've done a nice job now. Maybe a little, little bit right there. Okay, let's now see how we've done. I'm going to back out a bit. Just that far. There's the face we worked on. I could do a little more maybe up in the forehead, but I think this looks pretty good for our demonstration. Okay, I'm going to make a copy now of the original down here. Pull it up like that. I'll put this on top of everything else. This way we can see the original and I can show and hide this. So here's the original. And there it is cleaned up. So original and cleaned up just like that. Let me clean our backgrounds. We can get rid of that thing. There we go. 
So original and clean, original and clean. See how nice this technique works to give you a real beautiful cleanup in here on this kind of a portrait. This is what this is really great at doing. Going a little bit more here. You see a bit better right there. There's the original and there's our cleaned up version. Original, cleaned up. You can see how nice this this does this kind of photo retouch. It's great for this kind of work in here. Again, if you need much more, you know, major areas, do the major stuff first with whatever technique you want, and then use this as your final tight cleanup. But there we go. That is how to use the frequency separation technique to do a portrait cleanup. Again, there's the original. There's our cleaned up version. Looks absolutely perfect. And if you are a little unsure about how to set up the layers for this, watch the first video, and I have the link up there again on the screen right now. Go ahead and click on that link and go back to the first video, or the link is in the description. You can click on that and go back to the first video as well. So there you go, a demonstration of how to use the frequency separation technique for portrait editing. Thank you for watching my video. I hope you found it useful. If you like this video, click on the like button below to let others know. You can click the subscribe button so you don't miss any of my videos in the future. I'm frequently uploading new training videos. Don't forget to check out my website at howtogurus.com. You can share this video with your friends and coworkers. Just click on share and then click on the social media buttons. Feel free to comment on my videos. I try to answer all comments as quickly as I can. 